This lecture is on DNA replication. DNA replication copies the genetic information of the cell. You might have noticed that there is a person there with a rat fetus, and the rat fetus is glowing. The reason why they chose this image as the cover for this section and for this chapter is because this is the result of an experiment where an underground glowing uh, gene was transmitted to a rat fetus. Because, as we've stated in the last lecture, DNA is the same in all living organisms, we are able to transfer DNA bits from one organism to another. All right, what you have to the bottom right of this slide is the cell cycle. The cell cycle represents all of the stages that a cell must go through during its life. A cell is either going to be preparing to grow, or it's going to be synthesizing. That's what we're going to be going over today, DNA replication, or it's going to be going through mitosis. G1 and G2 are checkpoints. These are the stages in which a cell makes sure that all of its components are working correctly. It prepares to replicate or prepares to grow, but it's like a checkpoint. All right, I want you to keep a couple of things in mind during this section. A single DNA strand is going to serve as a template for a new DNA strand. And Shargaff's rules apply for this section, meaning thymine bonds with adenine and cytosine bonds with guanine. The result of this stage is going to be that each body cell gets a complete set of identical DNA. All right, in order for DNA replication to occur, several enzymes have to play their part. The first enzyme is helicase. Helicase is going to slide along that DNA molecule, unzipping it, as is shown in the image in the bottom of this slide. After helicase is done, there will be free-floating nucleotides, and they will be forming hydrogen bonds with the template strand. This is done by primase. After primase is done, and there is a primer produced using that old DNA strand, DNA polymerase is going to come around as the builder enzyme and is going to bond both the nucleotides together to form a new double helix. Polymerase enzymes form covalent bonds between nucleotides in the new strand. Here in this image to the bottom of the slide, we see the old DNA strand depicted in blue and we see the new DNA strand depicted in orange. All right, two new molecules of DNA are formed, each with an original strand and a newly formed strand. That's why you can see two sets of double helixes. One strip is blue and the other one is orange, meaning that in each double helix, one of the strands is old and one of the strands is new. This is why we call DNA replication semi-conservative, because while one strand remains old, the other strand is new. There is also a proofreading mechanism that the enzymes take care of. So when you write an essay, one of the best things to do is go back and read your work. You can catch grammatical mistakes, you can catch synthesis mistakes, you can catch all kinds of mistakes in your essay if you proofread it several times before turning it in. The same thing happens during DNA replication. DNA polymerase goes back, finds, and corrects errors. These errors can be the genetic code that would lead to pathogens 
These errors could also be the erroneous genetic code that could lead to cancer. But thanks to DNA polymerase, we are able to eliminate those mistakes. Also, one important thing to note, DNA replication does not occur from right to left or left to right. DNA replication occurs at many origins of replication.